We have almost 30 years of starter Pokemon with the grass, fire, and water typings. And while there's not really anything wrong with that, I think over the years, Pokemon fans have grown curious to see what starter Pokemon of other types could be like as well. So today, we are going to take a look at that by seeing what the classic starter Pokemon that we all know and love could be like with different types. So let's go ahead and check it out. It's officially the holiday season, and you know what that means. It's a great time for the wonderful sponsor of today's video, Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. These two are subscription boxes that get you tons of Japanese goodies and treats that come straight from Japan, and they are filled with some delicious stuff. Tokyo Treat gives you the more modern experience and has stuff like strawberry chocolate cake Kit Kats. Meanwhile, Sakura Co. gives you the more traditional vibes, and they even include a piece of traditional traditional Japanese tableware each month along with all of their treats, which is an awesome touch. This month, the themes of these boxes are Snacktacular Christmas for Tokyo Treat and Holidays in Hokkaido for Sakura Co., and as such are filled with tons of Christmas-themed treats. I've been getting these for a while myself, and they're honestly great, and they would genuinely make a fantastic gift either for yourself or for a loved one on this holiday season. Plus, you can also get $5 off of your first box of each when you use the links in the description below and code OOPS at checkout, and it even directly supports the channel as well, so it's honestly the gift that keeps on giving. So check everyone off of your list with a gift from Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. with those links below, and a big thank you to them for supporting the channel. So first things first, the artwork of these designs were done by my good friend Dimes Fakimon, who you can check out with the links in the description below, which you should definitely do. Second, while we are giving these starters new types, since they are starters, I felt like they should still use a type triangle to determine their types. And while there aren't really that many type triangles that are as perfect as grass, fire, and water are, they will still work fine for what we're using them for here. I am totally up for just going with any types though in future videos if you guys want to see more videos on this topic because we're just going to be covering the first three generations of starters in this video. So there is definitely more to cover here if we want, so be sure to let me know all of your opinions about that and if you want to see more videos in the comments below. Finally, I also wanted to give a quick shout out to Prag Magic, as this was a video that he also did, and I had also coincidentally planned to do it too, as you're seeing now, but I just wanted to give some credit where it was due to Prag Magic for originally covering this concept. With that said though, let's go ahead and get into the Pokemon. We are covering the Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn starters today, and we're going to begin with the Kanto starters. The type triangle I have decided to give Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle is Flying, Fighting, and Rock. I picked this triangle because this is actually one of the few other triangles other than grass, fire, and water that is actually a perfect triangle, meaning that every type is super effective against another and also resists that same type, so every type has a strength and a resistance. So if we ever did actually get differently typed starters, this is a legit triangle that could actually be used, and this is is what the Kanto starters could look like in another universe where they actually had these types instead. I decided to give Bulbasaur the flying type here, which was naturally the hardest one to apply to this group. I did that because Charmander is already part flying type when it evolves into Charizard, and so it was kind of naturally eliminated, so it was down to Bulbasaur and Squirtle anyway, and I actually came up with an idea for Bulbasaur as a flying type that I thought was pretty neat. Instead of its signature bulb, it carries what is basically a cloud on its back, and this cloud is meant to essentially act as a balloon, where it will grant Bulbasaur the ability to float. 
However, I also wanted it to resemble a bundle of cotton as well, so that there was some double meaning to this part of the design, and so it also made a little bit more sense conceptually, and wasn't literally just a cloud on Bulbasaur's back. Because of this, I figured that its evolutions could ultimately become flying grass types, which I think would be fine in this situation even though Bulbasaur is already a grass type, since flying is still its primary type here. And basically, that would mean that these Pokemon could become cotton cloud frog monsters, which sounds pretty amazing if I do say so myself. We will have to wait on covering those evolutions though, because now we've got to talk about Charmander and the other starters, although if evolutions are something that you guys want to see, once again, be sure to let me know in the comments below. With that said though, Charmander is up next, and Charmander became the fighting type in this scenario, because between fighting and rock, I had the perfect idea for a rock type Squirtle, who we'll get to in a sec, so the fighting type landed on Charmander. And while admittedly it is kind of funny that one of the fire starters who isn't actually a fighting type ended up with the fighting type here, I think it also works really well on Charmander. And the other thing that it also does is ultimately make it weak to Bulbasaur, meaning that the type effectiveness here is kind of reversed amongst these three starters, which is pretty fun. And that also means that Charmander is now strong against Squirtle as well as a result, who as I said, is a rock type. The reason why I decided to make Squirtle a rock type here is simple, and that is because its shell was able to easily be converted into a rock that it carries on its back instead. Although, as still a turtle Pokemon, I imagine that this rock could still act as a shell, and it could hide in this rocky shell to appear as nothing more than a regular rock as a form of camouflage, which is also a neat concept in my opinion. And with that said, those are my alternately typed Kanto starters. Would you take any of these over the originals? Be sure to let me know down in the comments as we now transition to the Johto region. For the Johto starters, the type triangle that I have gone with is Flying, Fighting, and Ice. This is not a perfect type triangle like the others, but it almost works because each of these types is at least strong against another, so once again, we can work with it here. For the Flying type, I have opted to give it to the Grass starter once again and make Chikorita into a Flying type. And while, once again, this was the hardest type of the three to give to these Pokemon, I feel like it ended up working out pretty well, because the reason I ultimately chose to give Chikorita to the flying type is because the idea of swapping its head leaf with a feather just seemed too perfect not to do. And, you know, in a way, this design can actually make sense with Chikorita as a Pokemon since it and its family are all based on dinosaurs who once had feathers themselves and are also the ancestors of birds. So I imagine that the evolutions could play off of that kind of dynamic, which would be a lot of fun. Next up is my boy Cyndaquil, and it became the fighting type of the bunch. Instead of shy and docile like normal Cyndaquil, this version is cocky and confident which I thought would be a good contrast for it, and is one of the reasons why I thought it would be fun to give the fighting type to it. Since Cyndaquil is based on an echidna, who naturally have quills instead of the flames that Cyndaquil replaces them with, I thought that giving it some actual quills and giving it a sharp, edgy look would work well with the fighting type too, and overall, I think this is a pretty cool interpretation of the best starter Pokemon ever, at least as far as I'm concerned anyway. That means though that Totodile has to become the ice type here, and I opted for this because I thought that Totodile's spikes on its back seemed like they could translate really well to literal ice, and I think that idea was proven with this design because I think ice type Totodile looks amazing. I love the striking white color of its body, and I love how it just pops and feels so different compared to regular Totodile, but the typing still works so great with its design at the same time. 
It feels like to me that this could be an actual regional variant or something like that, because it feels that natural. So I would personally love to see an ice type totodile like this actually happen someday. Once again, this also reverses the effectiveness triangle for the starters, just like it did with the Kanto starters, which is also really cool. What do you guys think about these Johto starters, though? Let me know, and let me know which one you would pick as we now check out the Hoenn starters. For the Hoenn starters, I have gone with the type triangle of rock, ground, and ice. This is another one of those near-perfect triangles, and I selected this one because I felt like the types could work well with the starters themselves. Trico has become the rock type in this scenario, and the reason that I went with that is because Trico has a punk kind of personality, at least in the anime anyway, and I felt that as a rock type, it could become a punk rocker, and that is how the rock type would apply. We have had a Rockstar starter Pokemon before with Rillaboom, but it totally blew its opportunity to also become the literal rock type, so I figured that Trico could use it and show what an actual rock type, rock music based starter Pokemon could actually be like. Then we come to Torchic, and it becomes ground type. This one is the one that actually caused me to go with this type triangle as a whole, because when I thought of Torchic and the ground type, my brain immediately went to Quail, since Quail are birds that actually spend most of their time on the ground, even though they're birds. So I thought that that would be a fun representation of the type, and I feel like I was right, because I think the design turned out fantastically. And then, last but certainly not least, we have Mudkip, who also becomes Ice-type and very much follows the Totodile approach, which I am personally okay with because I think Ice-type Mudkip looks amazing. Maybe it's just me, because Ice is my favorite type, but anytime you give a Pokemon an Ice-type form and just make them white, it just results in an S-tier design even though it's such a simple change. People went crazy for it with Alolan Vulpix and Ninetales, and I think the same is true here. The design isn't crazy different, but there's something about the color scheme that makes it feel really different, but in a fascinatingly cool way. And I personally love how it turned out. So that is a glimpse of what the starter Pokemon could be like if they were different types. Is this something that you want to see actually happen in a Pokemon game someday? And what do you think of these designs? Let me know in the comments below, and also let me know if you would like to see more videos like this for the other starters, and possibly the starter evolutions as well. Because if this video does well, I would love to continue doing more. You can also help to further support the channel if you would like by listening to my Pokemon remixes on Spotify and other streaming services. It helps out the channel a ton right back here and is very much appreciated, so be sure to check it out. With that said, I will be back very soon with another new video, and until then, as always, thank you all so much for watching this one, I really appreciate it, and I will smell you guys later. Thank you.